Good morning everybody. The 350 is just in short. It's early in the morning and the sun is right above. So if I come here, you're not gonna be able to see shit. So let's just do the video here. So today is a really big day for the 350. First of all, we're gonna be taking it to its MLT. And second of all, we're gonna be doing its first drift modification if the MLT goes well. Um, I've made a decision to take it for its MLT today because I feel like everything I can check here on the floor, I've checked and it's good. So we did a full electrical test with the BCM. The BCM controls all the lights, all the fans, all the winds, everything the bit that the BCM controls. We've done a test and everything came out well with that. Brake distance aren't crap, they're not scored. There's plenty of meat left on the pad. So although we are gonna upgrade the brakes, I feel like they would be fine now to get through an MLT. We've had the car up and we've checked for rust as best as possible. And although like some of the braces are a little bit need replacing, the chassis itself actually looks really clean. And also we have the new wheels on their cars. They've got brand new tires on. And when I had every wheel off, I checked for I checked for playing the suspension and I checked for play in the bushes and it all seemed good. So I feel like I can't really do much more than this in terms of doing an MLT unless it's on a ramp by an MLT test. So we got it booked in for an MLT this morning and hopefully she passes. I don't know, let's see. Let's see if she gets many minors. I mean, it never failed an MLT. It just ran out of an MLT. It never re-got really an MLT. It just sat about for seven years. So I'd be surprised if it doesn't, pass after I've done all the checks on it but let's just drive it there first time driving it as well um, and let's see if it's get on MLT and let's bring it home and then let's carry on with that just modification here we go here we go so here we go this is this is the furthest I've ever drove so obviously I have drove this car like around in a circle because the yard it was on um, obviously he owned it so I did drive just to make sure you know I had a clutch and it went in gears but this is the first time and it drives really good. I'm hoping that on the way there, that's just gonna clean all that little bit of, so that layer of surface rust that's just built up on the brakes as it's been sat. Um, as I said, I did clean them off, but um, it's nice to just get the pads friction against because you're never really gonna clean the layer off the back of the disc that you can't see, you know, when it's all bolted up to the car. So when I get some safe places, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do some, some nice firm brakes like that just to kind of clear up that disc just before we get in there. Woo, 350Z, let's get the windows down. She passed. Actually, he came up to me, he said, it's not that bad under there. Uh, he said, it's just really dirty and just covered in shit. Uh, he says, the only thing that was close to was the, do you know that big brace at the back? Um, not the one at the front, the brace at the back. He says, uh, he says it's not a failure, but it's definitely advisory. He said you need to get that brace changed. He's absolutely passed. I'm absolutely buzzing. Fair play to her. Uh, he let me come and have a look underneath it as well, just to kind of see if any sort of rust issues. And I was correct. It's pretty much just the braces that are bad and the legs and the sills and everything like that and the floors, they're all good. So let's get home. And we're going to be doing that modification that you need to do to these cars to get them drifting. So I've been trying to put this window down and it's not been going down. I'm like, oh, maybe the regulator's bollocksed. I've just looked and I was like, well, the central locking works, so... And I've had this button press the whole time. <laughs> hey, this car's gonna be good, man. So however badly I want to just get a jet wash of this and just clean all the cobwebs, clean underneath it, clean the inside, just clean the whole car. However badly I want to do that, I think for the detailing addicts in here, because I know there's a lot of people who love like full detailing videos. I'm not a detailing guy. I think we're gonna probably do that in one of the next videos. Take it to a proper detailer and just like clean the whole car, get it up in the air, jet wash, jet wash the engine bay, clean the engine bay, just totally clean the whole car. I get lots of comments and requests when I've got cars to, um, to do like a full detailing cleaning video. And I'm not really into it, but this car has been sat for seven years. I think that'll be a really good video. So we'll leave that to the next one. But today, we're gonna be drifting this car. And these cars have a very, very intrusive traction, traction controls and very intrusive ABS systems on the car. Traction controls doesn't let you go sideways pretty much at all. And the ABS stops you doing any sort of left foot braking at all. I say I'm not the best drifter in the world. I'm not entirely amazing at it. Um, I'm not gonna be jumping some tandems, but I wanna learn how to do it, you know? I wanna learn how to properly tandem and stuff. I and mean, we will need to left foot brake. So the very first thing we need to do, because we're gonna be messing about with a lot of electric, it's gonna be cutting fuses, cutting wires on the ECU. The first thing we're going to be doing is to disconnect the battery. So the first thing we need to remove is the computer for the traction control. We need to totally unplug that and get it out of the way. Now that sits 
in the center console just behind the gear set case so we're gonna have to remove all of this no idea how it actually looks quite well built it feels well built i'm actually quite impressed with the build quality of this in this sound but this just pops out and there's a screw there there's a little fillet screw just in here so i'm gonna start here by the way we have two spaces for true rally holiday for car enthusiasts you pay 250 pound everything's included all your nightclubs all the drinks in the nightclubs all the hotels you get a downloadable route we have an activity you get stickers for your car you get goodie bags everything's included come on the trip of your lifetime with like-minded individuals like yourself sick cars to the best roads in the country don't miss out two spots available everything looks pretty well fucking put together i have to google this one so i don't want to break anything okay and we're gonna get an and we're just going to pull this up. Jesus Christ. Okay, we can see some screws. This is good. We can see screws. Boom, boom. And you can see two little indentations just down here. So I'm guessing there's a bolt on each side. And hopefully, it kind of slides up. So I had to put the battery back on, push the seat all the way forward, and then I can get to this screw. It does just screw off. It just feels like it's, like, not going to, so... Whoa, wait in that. There's a trick to this, which I don't know what. Never mind. Smashed it, my guy. So here are a load of things. Um, obviously, that's the handbrake. This is the traction control thing here. Some people remove it entirely, but we're just going to disconnect it and uh, just like have the wiring around here. Okay. So that's one of four things we need to do so let's get on to the next okay so the next one we'll come in underneath the out I just bang my thing there is a little fuse box in here and there should be a pink fuse like this a 30 amp a 30 amp and a 40 amp and you can see it on here as well you've got abs abs ignition switch now in most cars you would just remove these two fuses but the issue is that this is a whole singular fuse with these. So what we're gonna do is, we need to chop these two little wires in there and that will stop the fuse from fusing. So now we just need to break these two 30 amp ones, which are the smaller ones, which I hope I've got a, snip, a pair of snips that can get in there. But you can see this one here is still there. I did just chop them, but then like there was two bits that potentially could have touched as they moved. So I just got some pliers in there and kind of just like ripped out the end. So there's nothing in there now. So we're going to pang this back on. Now we do have one more thing to do, which is the most scariest. So the final thing is we need to come over to here and we need to go underneath the passenger well. And we need to pull down the ECU, which is sitting just about here. I don't know how to get it out. So I'm going to have a little bit of a fiddle, but we need to pull that and we need to chop some wires on the ECU. So we're on the GoPro. I'm going to bring you underneath. Okay, so the ECU is just here. It's a little tab on the end that you pull and it opens up like this and pops out. So we need to find a wire. I'm going to have a look in a second because I can't remember what it was. I'm going to chop the wrong one. I'm pretty sure it goes to pin 101. You can, if you look in here, let me get my light. Oh, Jesus Christ, I hate doing stuff like this. Just, this is how I am right now. This is me right now. You can see here, you won't be able to see, but I can see it. It says 98 on one end and 105 on that end. So we can kind of match up the, to the wiring. But first of all, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut back this the loom here or peel it back, hopefully. So I'm going to need two hands and just peel back some of the loom and get all the wires out. Okay, so I've ripped the tape off, ripped this top cover so I can see all the wires now. Now apparently there's a blue and an orange wire which goes to pin 101. Now this was an American that I've seen and I'm gonna kind of just put it up and see where pin 101 would be and then hopefully there is a blue and orange wire. If there is a blue and orange wire and it is going to pin on one, we're going to chop it. It's the second line across. This is the first line. One, two, three, four. Second line. Top is 98 and bottom is 105. So, look at this here. We've got 98, 99, 100 is at three. And there's a blue and orange wire just there, which is going to pin 101. So, I'm going to track it back a little bit and chop it. Because if I do need to rewire it, I don't want to be chopping it here. I want to be chopping it up here. All right, so this is the culprit here. I found him. And we're going to chop him down here 
where it's where you've got the most accessibility to the wire if you need to wire it back on and we're just going to go boom connected done not scared i am going to put a little bit of black tape just on either end just so they don't you know oh you can't even see that sorry i i dropped it by the way there it is right so the fuses are back in ecu is back on and plugged in battery is back on let's start it and if you've done everything right well firstly it'll start <laughs> and secondly we should have some like abs and traction lights on the dash that's good that's really good yeah esp off shut the doors perfect abs light is on we've not got our seatbelt on so that's why but we've got traction off and abs off Woohoo! let's do some sets baby 